Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday. Oh, yes, this is Bible Tract Echoes, that's for sure. But it's Tuesday, and on our Tuesday broadcast, we give each Tuesday a special title because we have a special focus every single Tuesday. We focus on the gospel. We want to not just urge people to use tracts. That's always a focus here. But we hopefully want to urge people to be gospel tellers, whether it's through tracks, but even more importantly, through our own spoken word and eyeball to eyeball conversations with lost people. And that is our focus today. Let me begin by asking this question. Is telling the gospel important? Yes or no? Well, I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to tell myself that you just said, yes, it's important. Telling the gospel is key. Okay, here's the next obvious question. The question is why? Why is telling the gospel important? Now, don't answer quickly. I want you to think that over a couple of minutes and be ready to give yourself two biblical answers. But now I've got question number three. Why do so many believers who want to tell the gospel not do it? Now, frankly, I come back to this question with some regularity because it hits at an ongoing problem in the true Christian community. It's a question every local church pastor, elder, deacon, Sunday school teacher, and so on needs to be openly talking about, and then we need to be giving answers, real answers, practical answers. We need to find some practical solutions to help people tell the gospel. Why we need to tell the gospel is a frequent theme in our pulpits, the pulpits of good godly churches. But how we fix the problem of not telling the gospel, that tends to go, well, go into theory, not into practical answers. So let's be practical today. Oh, by the way, I've got a great track story to tell you of somebody coming to Christ today. So get your Bible open to Acts chapter 1. Jot down some practical stuff on a piece of paper today. I've got one of our gospel tracts in my hand right now. And by the way, a gospel tract is a simply an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of the gospel. And the one in my hand here is a rather unique one for us. Rather than in paragraph form, this gospel tract, which is titled Do You Know For Sure, is in a booklet format, a small booklet. It's four inches wide, two and three quarters inches tall. It's on good, sturdy, glossy paper. And it's done, well, it's done, we often say, with millennials in mind, because it's not done in paragraph format. It's done in short bursts of statements dealing with the gospel. Now, friend, if you are ever wondering how to tell the gospel, get this track. It'll help you tell the gospel. But it's done in a form Format, you can use it to actually walk through the gospel when you're talking to somebody as well as give them this to read some time later on on their own. This gospel track was done with two key kinds of people in mind. Number one, it's done with religious people, people that are religious, that go to church, that view the fact that they may be okay with God because of their religiosity. They may have grown up in church, whether it's a gospel preaching church or a non-gospel preaching church. But there's another target audience. We give this gospel track, we made this gospel track with Mormons in mind. The word Mormon does not appear in here. But in the teaching of Mormonism, they mess up the gospel. And this gospel tract lays it out in such a keen way that 
even if a Mormon is reading it, they'll have to confront the biblical truth, and it's going to answer some of their key questions. The track, again, is entitled, Do You Know For Sure? Now, at the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Plan to do that today. So get a piece of paper ready and pen ready. You can, by the way, go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Bible, B-I-B-L-E, Tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. Inc. is I-N-C. BibleTracksInc.org. Go there and you can order the sample packet. Friend, however you get the tracks from us, we want to be a partner with you. We want to give you tools to be a gospel teller. Do that today. Two verses from the book of Acts. Acts, please, chapter 1, verse 8 says simply this. You probably have memorized it. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And then over in chapter 8, verse 4 of Acts says this, Therefore they, the they here, these are not the, the spiritual elite. This is not the apostles. This is just general believing folk. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the gospel. Let me tell you the gospel story, the track story I mentioned here a moment ago. This comes from a Christian brother in the city of Peoria, Illinois. He writes me a letter every now and again. Here's what his letter says. Dear Pastor Mark, it's been so long, too long since I wrote to you about somebody being saved on the city bus. This time, as at other times in the past, he was sitting behind me. I handed him the track the best I can. He refused it, but then he asked for it back. After he had finished reading it, I pointed to the prayer on the track and asked him if he prayed the prayer, and he had. Later on in the letter, he says this, At last, again, I have been used to bring another soul to Jesus Christ. It is so great a feeling to do so. And the letter has a couple more lines in it. This man is a great soul winner. This man in Peoria, Illinois, lives on, well, the lower end of the economic scale. He has only a basic educational level, and he dresses, well, he dresses rather frumpily, but he's been used by God to see many people come to Christ. He knows he doesn't have all the social graces to put on a real slick gospel presentation, so he doesn't try. But what he does know is that God's power can work through him and does work through through him, so he trusts God's ability to use his availability, and God uses him. He's led many to Christ. So let me just come back to my question here. How can we help one another get started in telling the gospel? And I think the main responsibility for this task is threefold. Number one, pastors are charged by God to help mature believers, help to get saints to become mature. Evangelism is a key part of maturing as a believer. Second fold in this is the older and more mature saints, both men and women, are to help edify, build up the younger, immature saints, the babes in Christ. So a seasoned gospel teller needs to go seek out a younger believer and show that person how to tell the gospel. Take him with you. Show him how it's done. But thirdly, each one of us are personally responsible to obey God's charge to tell the gospel. So even if no one else is around to help us, God will if we seriously seek his face in this matter. So how do we get started? Let me be very, very practical here right now if I can. Number one is this, practice at church. Practice at church. Some churches use 10 to 15 minutes in their evening service to show how to tell the gospel. They do this regularly. In these churches, they often allow time every month for people to tell how they had a witnessing experience in that month. Not last year, not five years ago, not 20 years ago, but in the last month. 
In this setting, the seasoned gospel tellers in the church practice on the immature saints up in front of the congregation, and by so doing, everybody learns something, and it helps them get past the, well, the awkward stage of how to get into the gospel. That's number one, practice at church. Number two, practice outside of church. Here's where church leaders need to make, notice I said make times to go out in the community for the express purpose of telling the gospel. Now, whether the folk you're going to are simply follow up on people who visited your church or you're going door to door, just uh, cold turkey, so to speak, my, my friend, if you and I will overtly make a plan to go tell the gospel, God will bless our plans. We're planning, making a plan in the will of God. Third, have an organized class at your church on evangelism. There are a number of really good evangelism curriculum out there for local churches to use. Maybe your church needs to pay the bill to send two couples to an evangelism training event where they get the preparation they need to be the gospel teachers at your church. Rather than expecting the pastor to do it all, let some of the lay folk become the strong teachers on evangelism. Here's a fourth suggestion. How about you and I humbling ourselves before our family and practice telling the gospel at home? Now, there's a lot of adult Christians who want to tell the gospel but never have. If those kind of people would admit to their spouse, admit to their children, younger children or adult children, that, well, they want to be a good gospel teller, but they have not been a good gospel teller. And then just say to their spouse, say to their kids, so would you help me? I need your help. Ask your kids, ask your spouse to allow you to tell them the gospel. And the more times you practice doing the gospel, the easier it will become. But trust me, you're never going to fully get past the butterflies in the stomach stage. And I think that's really probably a good thing because that Butterflies in the stomach, that that nervousness will remind us that evangelism is not accomplished because of human might or power. It's accomplished by the Spirit of God working in and through us. That's what Jesus said in Acts 1, ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. God says, I will help you do this. Now, remember, believer friend, remember, there is no spiritual gift called evangelism. Now, God does Uh, identify a number of spiritual gifts in the Bible, but gospel telling is not a gift. God does not give to some people the gift of evangelism, not to others. Evangelism is not a gift. It's a charge. It's a responsibility. It's a burden. It's a burden that God places on the shoulders of all his children. If you don't have a burden, if you don't sense a burden on your heart for lost people, then there's a great starting point, but not an ending point. It's a starting point. Father God in heaven, you need to pray. Make my heart hurt over lost people. Help me see them and where they're headed without Jesus as their Savior. Make me hurt and then make me tell them the gospel. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.